I own a three-point tiller, so why am I messing with this? And I think there's some good information there about why it's better to plow the ground than to till it, but we'll get to that later. Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and a couple weeks ago, I tried to plow some ground with this old two-bottom plow using my small John Deere hydrostatic tractor. And at the end of the video, I basically came to the conclusion that this tractor didn't have the pulling power to pull this plow in my soil. And that video was pretty popular. It got tons of comments from people telling me a list of things that I could have done differently that would have made this work. So the purpose of today's video is to look at all those suggestions that were made to me and try to implement those and see if that makes a difference or if I was right and this tractor just can't handle this plow. Now, for reference on the tractor, John Deere compact tractors come in four size ranges. The series tells you how big, how physically large the tractor is. Then within that series, you have all types of horsepower. And this is a two series tractor. So one series is very small, subcompact. A four series is getting close to the size of an actual utility tractor. The two series comes in models between 25 horse and 38 horse. This is a 38 horsepower tractor, but it's in a very small frame size. So it's kind of an odd mix. And I feel like it's fantastic for a lot of things, but it might be a little bit underpowered when it comes to pulling because all of that 38 horsepower doesn't come to the wheels like it would in a direct drive tractor. That's why people are telling me that their old 25 horse Ford tractor or their Ford 8N or something like that could pull this plow. 100% of that machine's horsepower went to the wheels. On this, it's a ratio that comes to your wheels and it's affected by how good your hydrostatic drives are. And it's also affected by weight. But in my trial, I was not spinning the tires, meaning I had enough power but not enough traction. I had the opposite result. The tires never spun, but it, I would just bog the engine down and it would stop moving or bog the hydrostats down. So anyway, that's enough about the tractor. The first suggestion that I got over and over and over again was I needed to shine the mold boards up because if those are smooth and shiny, the dirt will roll off of them easier and it'll make it pull easier. To me, that seems like a 5% increase in how easy it is to pull. Not a huge game-changing thing. But I'm often wrong, so I'm going to take your advice. I'm going to polish all the rust up off of these and clean them up and see if that helps. It's an old beat-up plow. I gave almost nothing for it, and I'm only going to get it so good. It's got these welds on it. Now, the point is not terrible, but it's not sharp either. Okay, saying I was going to shine these up was a lot more work than I thought. I've been trying to polish these for over an hour, and I've taken all the rust off, but there's pitting, and you know, you can't take all that pitting off, and all of this is done with a flap disc and a wire wheel. I tried both, and you know, it did the best I could, then I put some rust patrol on it to slick it up. These shiny areas, I used an actual grinding wheel, and even after hitting it with that grinding wheel, it's not perfectly smooth. Another thing I did was there were big welds here, here, and here that were globbed up tall. I took this one almost completely down and, and kind of smoothed it out, and this one, and I started to do this one and realized that I don't think my dirt's coming all the way up to the top, and by that time, it doesn't matter. It needs to break over. So I did the best I could with it. And the point of this is I want the improved result of plowing, but I don't want to spend a bunch of money on a new plow when I can get by with an old one. And, you know, if it was a brand new plow, maybe it would pull easier, but I can't, 
I can't adjust for that. I'm not buying a new plow. The next thing people were saying was, just take one plow off. Well, that that's fine too, but I wanted to find out if this can pull a two bottom plow. If it can't, I can take one off and pull it as a one bottom plow, but I'd rather be able to do it with both. Okay, another comment that was frequently made is that there's supposed to be a sod cutting wheel that's up in front of this, and basically as you go along, that cuts it off so that as you go to flip it, it's a lot easier to flip as that piece is separated. Well, I don't think that this exact plow ever had one, and as I look at it, people are saying that's missing. Well, when I go onto a company website right now, you can buy them with those, but the majority seem to be sold exactly like this, without any kind of a cutting wheel. So if I found one as cheap as this, I think I paid $100 for this or something. If I found one that cheap that had those, that'd be great, but otherwise I'm not gonna find out. Just saw me pull the tractor up onto some four by fours. And what's the purpose of that? Well, tons of comments were saying I didn't have this properly leveled and I think I did, but let's find out. So what I read online is the best way to level a plow is to drive all four wheels up onto something that's eight inches tall, not necessarily eight inches, however deep you want to plow. If you want to plow eight inches deep, drive up onto something eight inches tall, and then drop these down till they touch the ground, and then you can see whether you're level or not. Because you don't need to be, them to be level while they're lifted up. You need them to be level while they're below ground. So the only thing I really had to work with was those four by fours that are true four inch, and it's better than nothing. So I'm gonna drop this down and see how level it is. All right, so it's gonna be hard for you to see this, but a lot of people were concerned about my side to side height difference. Well, right now my point on the back plow is touching the ground. The point on the front plow is about two inches high. And the comments were saying I should lower that to get this one the same height as that one, but I don't think so. From everything I can see, going to happen after you make your first cut and flip them over you're going to drive over in your second pass this wheel is going to drop down into a hole and then all of a sudden my plows like this that wheel drops into my furrow from the other plow and now I'm level so I think on the first pass or on flat ground you want this one a little bit higher and right now I'm only two inches higher so I don't think that's a problem open to hear your opinions on it now front to back the points touching the ground here, the back of the mold board, this spot right here, is maybe three or four inches off the ground. So I guess I should extend the top link and flatten that out. Because the steeper the angle, the more it's going to just dig and bite. And the more you flatten it out, it'll bite less. Now I think I've established that this is flat and level. And now it's just a matter of finding out if it'll pull or it won't. And then I've got a lot more to say about some of the other comments I got and about the reason I want to plow this instead of till it. But we'll just, we'll do the work and then we'll talk about it. Let's see, we are currently plowing about nine inches deep and less as we went because I kept raising it. I'm gonna try to go about six inches deep this time and see how it does. I guess we should go ahead and hit all the basics from an operational standpoint. I've got the throttle at max the entire time and I'm easing into the hydrostat 
which is like the way I say it's not going to make sense, but I've had this conversation with some different people that I trust for their opinions that easing into that gives you more power than trying to force it. I think I'm optimizing my power in that regard. It's in four wheel drive and I'm holding the diff lock pedal down. So I don't think I can do any more to make the tractor more efficient. I would say that it worked, but it didn't work great. It was, it's taking 100% of the tractor's capacity to do this work, but they are also made to work, so I don't feel too bad about it. But I wouldn't go out and say, I'm gonna plow five acres or something with it. It's, it's not the tool for it. It's not the tractor for it. Now, a couple other things. Some people were saying, you need to get some speed up, like get a run at it and drop the plow. If it requires that, I'm not going to do it. That seems like you're putting way too much stress on your three-point, on your three-point arms and your your top link. And I just, I'm not doing it if it takes that. Do I think shining up those mold boards helped? I think it helped a little bit. I don't think it was dramatic, but I it probably did help. And for that, I appreciate you guys. Changing the angle might have helped too. If I put my three-point lever all the way down and just tried to drive, it wouldn't do it. And whenever I started off and said, this tractor can't pull that, it's because I think pulling it means you drop it to the depth that it's able to plow. If it's a 12-inch mold board, you should be able to go 10 inches deep, right? And just drop it, the lever all the way down and just drive and it just works. If you're having to baby it and finesse it and the tractor stops, I back up and raise it just a little bit and then I can power through, I don't consider that being able to handle it. The next comment is that people were saying what I should do is make a really shallow first pass and then make a deeper pass on the second pass. Well, I've got a couple issues with that. First is trying to go back across this a second time your tractor is going to be doing this as it goes over the, the hills and the valleys that you've created. And doing that, your three-point implement is going to be rocking all over the place. So plowing a second time is going to be, you know, like getting punched around. I mean, it's, I don't really see the value in that. The final thing, a lot of comments said, why don't you just use a rotary tiller? Go buy a rotary tiller. Well, I have a rotary tiller. The advantage in my mind and what I've been told is that a plow is better for the soil. With a plow, you make a single cut and you flip that sod over. Now you've got upside down sod and you've got dirt, still topsoil probably, and then sod and then topsoil. You've made yourself a little sandwich there and that grass will break down and decompose and you really haven't stirred up the little microclimate in the dirt. You've got all these microorganisms and worms and 
everything else that lives in your topsoil and it's all still alive in there and if you just flip it over you're not really disturbing it as much because if you fully till this with a rototiller you're pulverizing it and it's in a you know in a way worse for your soil and i i've been told that and i believe it to be true so if you're able to plow this and disc it it's better another reason is for this area a tiller is great but you're not going to till 10 acres now if i could get a bigger tractor and a bigger plow and run a plow and a disc that's why you know farmers aren't doing 100 acres with a rotary tiller just that's a reason that they're not doing it that way so there are advantages to plowing and then disking as opposed to tilling the ground and i'd like to make it happen so i'm going to continue to try to make this work i'll give it some thought about what i want to do next now i originally was doing this for a fall garden now it's going to be for a spring garden but we'll touch back on it later i appreciate you guys taking time to watch this video i'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos and i'll see you next time